But you know that for many of us, shocker, uh, who had no control in childhood, it is often the thing that drives our adult lives. And that for some people, we can become too rigid. And that actually being somewhat flexible is one of the signs of mental well-being. But for many of us, because we had no control in childhood, all we want is to be in control. Control of our home, our life, our car, our partners, our kids. And if you've done all those things, you know that, that only goes so far. That control is an illusion. And that rigidity, not being willing to, you know, own your part in things, hear someone else's side of the story, make a compromise, consider that you don't have it all figured out, that there's more than one way of doing things that all of that creates more loneliness and isolation and rejection in your relationships. Because what you do when you're super rigid is you push others away. And I would argue you push parts of your inner child away, the part that's imperfect and messy and, you know, drips the jelly from the sandwich. Like, you're telling yourself that there's this sense of, like, power and control and, and healing you're going to get by, by being rigid and it's my way or the highway. And I promise you, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, there. I'm not suggesting that there aren't certain boundaries and principles and values and morals to hold. But those are yours even. Those are your beliefs, your religion, your morals, your values, for example. And that's great. They can apply to you, but they cannot apply to everyone else. It's not your job. So if you want to hold those things for yourself, it's fine. But you have to understand that that kind of rigidity about everything and everyone is actually more likely to make you feel unwell in every part of your life because there's no space for human error. There's no space for imperfection. And that's just not part of the human experience. So in terms of an exercise today, I would say ask yourself and target one area of your life where you feel like, yeah, I, I could probably relax that a bit. Maybe it's on yourself, how you talk to yourself, your exercise plan, maybe it's too regimented. Maybe you're not, you just don't make space and then you shame yourself to stay in that rigidity. It's not about saying, okay, you're tired today, so I'm gonna give you a rest day. It's like you beat yourself up because you have to do it in this rigid kind of way. How does it make you feel when you do that? Whatever this is, and how do you think it makes other people feel? And then identify whatever it is and see if you can find a way to turn the volume down, to increase the variability, the flexibility a little bit or a lot of it. Set it as a target for yourself. Feel free to share in the comments and let us know how it goes. It's, it's going to probably feel scary and unsafe. Remember that for many of us, we didn't have safety. And so I'm not suggesting that letting letting go of everything is a good strategy. But you have to try to find that, like with that Dan Siegel talks about the river of well-being, where you can flow and move down the river. You're not getting stuck or pulled under. You're flowing. Flowing is an important and healthy aspect of mental health. So, let me know. Trust me that letting go of your boundary of this rigidity here is not going to make you unlovable and not worthy of love. In fact, it's going to increase the way you share your lovability and your love with others. So let me know how it goes. Thanks for being here. I'll see you tomorrow.